Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about brushes. I've gotten a fair amount of questions um, and comments on here and other platforms about, you know, like what brushes I use and why I use them. And so I thought I would just show you guys because I use a good amount of brushes um, for different things and different reasons. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you what I use. So I have a bunch of brushes here. They fall into three categories. So the first category is workhorse brush, like the brush I use 95% of the time for mostly everything. Then the next category is detailing and fine brush work, such as eyeballs and like really delicate blends and, you know, small itty bitty areas. And then finally, what dry brushes I use. So first of all, I use Monument Hobbies and these were recommended to me by you guys when I asked um, people on my channel what what are some good stable brushes that are at a reasonable price point and it was this guy right here so this is their pro stable brush this thing was i think it was about 12 dollars. i'll link it below and this thing is perfect for most of the painting that needs to be done because it holds a good amount of paint but it comes to a fine tip. If you have your paint and you twist it into your paint, the tip is pretty fine, okay? So it does a really great job for most things. Prior to this, I was using a Raphael Kalinsky sable brush. This one is twice the price. This was about $25 and now it's completely destroyed. I don't know if you can see. Uh, I used to not take very good care of my brushes and now I take really great care of my brushes but I absolutely destroyed this brush because I wasn't using any brush cleaner and I was letting it dry facing up like this so all the water would dry down into the barrel and it like you can tell I need to trash this but I have an emotional attachment to it so I haven't thrown it away but uh yeah so the difference between these two I couldn't tell you I feel like this one is obviously more expensive um, this one does the job just as well at half the price. So yeah, I think I would definitely recommend the Monument Hobbies brushes. I have not tried their, uh, their synthetic line. I haven't tried it, but this is the sable brush and it's really fantastic. So yeah, um, I can show you guys what brush cleaner I use as well. It's also from Monument Hobbies. I have it here. It's the Gentastics Drunken Brush Goop. And all I do, all I do, it's kind of sticky. It got, it melted when it got mailed to me. It melted and it kind of spilled over and now it's like all over the place. But all you do is you wet your brush. I just like put it in and get a nice lather up and then it looks pretty disgusting, but <laughs> um, I get a nice lather and then I just kind of rinse it gently with my fingers and you can also use it as a brush conditioner so you put it in your brush again twist your brush into a fine point and let it sit works really well i've been using this thing for a while now and it's just like new so yeah i recommend that this is i think about ten dollars on their website i have a smaller monument hobbies brush this size one is in my opinion i feel like it's too long it's hard to do precise brush work with this thing because even though it comes to a really fine, fine tip, it's so long that it's hard to kind of control. So yeah, not the biggest fan of the size one, but the size three is absolutely perfect. For finer brush work, I was gifted um, the Artist Opus set and this is just how it looks like. It's super fancy smells really good and then this also comes with brush cleaner that i use i really like the smell of this brush cleaner um so the two brushes i use most from this are the size one and the size zero for some reason i skipped right over the double zero so here is the zero this is their um m line specifically for miniature painting i also have well i got a set of the series what was it the S for my husband for his birthday. And then I got really upset that I wasn't able to use them. I was using them secretly behind his back, but I really wanted my own so I didn't have to be sneaky about it. So he got me the series M. So I've actually used both. And I actually kind of prefer the series S. They're more similar in brush length to this. So they carry more paint, but the series M is just 
beautiful for that fine brushwork. It, they don't carry a whole lot of paint, but you will not find a pointier tip. So these ones are expensive. I think the whole set of four was $80. So they're pricey, or maybe it was even more. It was between 80 and $100. They're pricey, but I just take really great care of them. This is the triple zero. I've only actually used this a couple of times on some eyeballs and things like that. I just take really great care of them and I don't use them as my main brush because you don't need to and the Monument Hobbies actually works better because it holds more paint in my opinion so you can get more done. So that is what I use. Now the main topic point I wanna bring up is what I use for dry brushing, okay? Cause this is, a lot of miniature painters have discovered that eyeshadow brushes, makeup brushes work fantastic for dry brushing and I will vouch for that. I have been using eyeshadow brushes for the longest and I have a couple actual dry brushes that I use as well but I really only use those when these are drying so you might in some of my videos see a few other dry brushes but these really there's nothing better than eyeshadow brushes they're just so soft because they're meant to apply makeup to someone's face so they're very the amount of hairs are great. This is the brand e.l.f. and I recommend this brand because it's the cheapest, but they work, e.l.f. Um, eyeshadow brushes and makeup brushes work just as well as any of the other ones. Really, they're all ultimately the same in my opinion. But you can get an e.l.f. eyeshadow brush in this size for $2 on Amazon. I'll link it below, not an affiliate link. I'm just gonna put it down there because they're so cheap and they work so well. The only thing I will say is that you have to wash them immediately after using them. So I don't mean use them in a paint session, finish painting whatever you're gonna paint for the day and then go wash them. I mean, you have to use them and then immediately stop painting and go wash them if you really want to preserve the softness of them. And using just water, in my opinion, is not enough. You really do need some kind of brush goop, brush soap, conditioner, whatever it is. If you wanna use this one, this one works just fine. I use this on all my brushes because they're so soft and the hairs are so fine that if you don't take really great care of them, they won't last at all. So that's the only downside is that it is kind of a pain in the butt to wash them every single time immediately right after you use them. But in my opinion, the dry brushing you get from it is worth it. So that is all I will say about that. Um, I will link one of these below, like I said, and see this one, I didn't wash right away. I waited until after I was done painting for the day to wash and you can already see it's just, it's discolored and it's not quite as soft. Um, it's, I think this is actually a decently expensive eyeshadow brush. I don't know, this was gifted to me in a set that I meant for my face and I never used it for my face. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so those are the brushes that I use. I really recommend makeup brushes for eyeshadow. Find yourself a nice workhorse brush to do most of your painting which for me is this one. And I don't, I've used both of these and this one, the Raphael one is twice the price. And I would argue that they're more or less the same in quality. I wouldn't, I can't think of one single difference in the two. Um, the only thing is, I forgot to mention, and I think this may have just been a random mistake, but in the Monument Hobbies brush, when it first came to me, there was one little hair that was longer than the rest. All I had to do was take scissors and snip it off and then it was fine. Um, but the first few times I used it, I remember it was like just this one hair, it was really messing with me. And then I just snipped it and it was fine. But I don't think that that's across all of their brushes. I think maybe that was just a one-time thing for this one. Um, but yeah. Okay, so those are the brushes that I use. I hope that was helpful to someone. I will link all of these below. Um, none of them are affiliates. It's just what I use. And now I wanna show you something really cool, really quickly, because I know this video is already getting kind of long. Um, so I participated in a hobby secret Santa recently. And my secret Santa, the person that got assigned to me, was so incredibly generous and got me the coolest gift and i'm just going to show you guys right now i need to zoom out because it's big okay 
You ready? <laughs> he got me a um, Battle Sister Combat Patrol. And this isn't even all this person got me. They got me a few other models, some hobbying items, hot chocolate packets, and a ton of chocolate. Okay, so it's been very jolly over here at my house. But I was just astounded by the sheer generosity of this person who would buy something like this for a total stranger. It's just crazy. And this is perhaps the coolest combat patrol ever. And I've been wanting to start, I know I say this so very often about so many different armies and factions. I have been wanting to start a blank army for the longest. And it's true, I have really been wanting to start Scissors of Battle for the longest time and just could never justify doing it because I have so many other projects right now. But then this was just gifted to me and I have started painting and I will show you really quickly what I have going on. So she is simply gorgeous and this is my test color scheme i've gone through a few ideas of how i wanted to paint them i wanted them to still be kind of regal looking and not too far out there but i definitely wanted them to be a little bit different than the traditional black and red so i made her armor blue and i'm going i'm gonna bring up the robes a little bit to be more orange in the end right now they're still pretty red but this is my color scheme that i'm leaning towards right now and I have had so much fun painting her. Like really, these models are so incredibly detailed. It's insane. And I really wanna do them justice and take time with each one. So if you would like to see, you know, videos on my um, Sisters of Battle, let me know. Cause I don't really know what you guys want to see, but yeah, I have just been having a lot of time. I haven't a lot of time, a lot of fun with this because you know, I started a second one too. So she's in the very early stages. I'm still trying to figure out what kind of blue I want. Like if I want to do more turquoisey or lean more towards purpley, there's a hair on you, miss. Um, yeah, I'm undecided as far as the actual shade of blue I'll end up with, but I definitely am going to go with blue armor. I kind of like this purpley one now that I see it on camera, but I like the turquoise too. I can never decide. You know me, you know how I am. And... I really want this to be my first army that's fully matchy matchy. So I really need to solidify a color scheme sooner rather than later. But yeah, this is what I've been working on. So I'm thinking I might, you know, keep plugging through this combat patrol as a side project. I'm still gonna be painting my Wadroon from Conquest and I'm getting the itch to paint some more orcs recently. So just busy, busy times ahead. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys cause I'm really, really excited about that and so very grateful that my secret Santa wanted to wanted to splurge on me like that. It really meant so much to me. So, all right guys, that is it for this video. I will see you very soon. Let me know what kind of videos you guys wanna see. If you wanna see another painting tutorial or more of these kind of chill videos, you know, let me know what you think. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.